Welcome back to Manic Mods, YouTube's newest home of misfit modifications and mayhem. We've got to talk about all the stuff behind me. In my last video, I previewed three amplifiers that are ripe for the picking for retrofitting, and for the reasons they're in, you learned that the Dayton Audio Mini Amplifier was your boy's choice for his next project. We are getting closer to the build process of my next Manic Mod, which I will dub the Retro Raspberry Pi Jambox 4000S. Oh, okay, maybe maybe Pi Jams for short. Today I'm going to give you a special sneak peek at all the little things that will make up this amazing build I'll be starting in the next week. Maybe two weeks, depending on how it goes. Fear not, at this stage, my dual-booting Raspberry Pi 5 is singing the tune both in a familiar 8-bit melody and new ones in 32-bit high resolution. I'm surrounded I couldn't retrofit a retro TV without a screen. I have chose this 5 inch screen made by iPissedBit. Despite this name, I'm not pissed a bit. It has a resolution of 800 by 480 and sits nicely in the front cutout of this Bentley TV. I'll be printing a 3D bezel for it, but if you don't have one available, you could also use these cuttable PVC sheets. I plan on mounting my 5th generation Raspberry Pi directly behind the screen, but I have installed this extended DSi cable to give me some flexibility. The DAC hat on top is sold separately by InnoMaker. It has an RCA and 3.5mm output and works flawlessly in both Pi OS and Mood. The Pi and DAC will mount to the screen on its OEM mounting posts here. Oh, or here. Oh, where are those mounting posts? There we go. I've referenced dual operating systems twice now. I'm not doing this with PIM, but two different boot devices. The more demanding Raspberry Pi OS lives on a Samsung SSD connected to this Geekworm NVMe hat. It came with a short PCIe cable, and this white one was purchased to extend if needed. The lightweight and almighty high-res music OS mood booted in the same time on a SanDisk micro SD card. I'll be extending this to the exterior of my retro TV boombox with this extender made by Octronix. When this SD card is installed, the TV will be an HD music streamer, and if removed, it defaults to the NVMe for more robust media capabilities. One thing I like about this extender is that even with the SD removed, it's nicely held by friction. And my last storage medium is this one terabyte SSD stick made by SK Hynix. It's available to both operating systems and you'll find it much, much faster than a standard USB flash drive. Moving on to the audio and video accommodations, I'm going to ask for a thumbs up if you like this video. For reasons specified in my last video, I chose this 2.1 channel amp made by Dayton Audio. There are easier amps to retrofit like the Django I previously demonstrated, but I think that extending the front panel potentiometers will be worth it and the LED status board is already broken out. And just look at that backside, I, I mean damn. <laughs> I'll be using its RCA inputs for my Pi's DAC connected with these 12 gauge RCA cables. And if I determine Bluetooth is not enough for a secondary input, I will also have this aux input I may extend to the TV's exterior. This cable as well as my potentiometer extensions will use cloth EMI shielding to minimize unwanted noise. Next up are the speakers I chose for this integration. These Tang Band speakers slap so hard they'll put me to work ensuring my TV doesn't twerk right off the table. As such, these will be installed during night one of my build. The subwoofer will be installed face down over a large cutout of the base of the TV. For now, I will show you fitment face up as to not damage the driver or passive radiator. Grommet should help stabilize the subwoofer and I'm left the perfect amount of room for the mid-range speakers which will fire outwards on the sides. And after a lot of hunting, I found the perfect speaker grills for them. They match the color of the TV and whole alignment of the speakers perfectly. As mentioned, you can find all the parts in the description of this video. Last up on the audio front, I plan to extend the amplifier's output to the rear with banana jacks. From left to right are plugs for my office speakers, binding banana posts and smaller banana jacks. To switch off the internals, I will have have a push button switch for each the subwoofer and two mid ranges. This will not only allow me to disable internals for external speaker use, but also perform troubleshooting as needed. Another useful troubleshooting feature is an external display. To extend the video on the Pi 5, I picked up this micro HDMI to HDMI cable that has both a convenient right angle and a flat cable. It'll connect the Pi to an externally accessible HDMI port using this coupler made by Try in Vain. Challenge accepted. Finally, we are looking at the power and peripherals that will amp up this Manic Mod. Like the micro SD, HDMI, and speakers, the USB will be extended to the side of my Raspberry Pi Jambox. 
I've again ensured these are right angles to avoid clearance issues connecting to the Pi. These male to males can be used with this socket for an easy exit to the exterior, but I've also procured these male to females for additional or alternate ports. I'm using this Talent Cell 24 volt lithium ion battery for this, and its only shortcoming is that the 5 volt only provides 2.4 amps, while the Pi should have 5 amps. To ensure it has enough power, I will be using this Drock Buck converter, which takes 9 to 36 volts and steps it down to 5 volts, 5 amps. The right side here is for power input from the battery, and the left side is for output to the Pi. Given the wide input voltage of the buck converter, I can choose to either use the 12 or 24 volt power output of the talent cell battery. However, I will choose to use the 24 volt 5 amp solely for the Dayton audio, and I will use the 12 volt output almost solely for the buck converter. This battery will mount to the rear of the TV for safety and maintenance reasons, but I may also have a new battery cover 3D printed to improve the aesthetics of the final build. In the meantime, I plan to use the rear for the battery's wiring and possibly these mini Bluetooth gamepads for retro gaming and other control. The battery comes with a few interconnects and to extend them as needed, I purchased these DC connectors. We're almost at the end of our show and tell here. I do appreciate you sticking around. To use that 5 volt output from the battery, some LED lighting was in order. This warm white LED strip will be cut to 5 millimeters, and I may equip it behind the original tuner dial as a power indicator. I would have liked to do this with the potentiometers as well, but fear they would introduce noise. To make up for this, I snagged this dream color LED strip and controller, which I plan to install under the TV for some sweet bias lighting. Here are some equally lit push button latching switches for speakers and accessories. What's nice about these is their LED indicators are discreetly powered. So there are two wires for the switch and two wires for the LED, which opens up a lot of possibilities. And finally are these LED momentary switches which operate in the same way but are not latching and will be useful for the soft power features of the amp Pi. Did I say finally? Okay, one more I forgot. I'm Pi faced. This WaveShare antenna will be used to extend the Wi-Fi of the Raspberry Pi. I'll need a longer socket and cable but I intend to replace the original Bentley TV's antenna with it. That's going to do it fam. I appreciate you sticking around. I hope this video was useful to build your own projects. As mentioned, I'm going to be stepping through this build over the next couple of weeks. So I appreciate you on my journey. If you like the video, please like the video. If you want to share with your favorite PayPal's, 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 please do. I, I spend too much money on PayPal. Do appreciate you being here. I'll catch you next time.